um, we saw something that we thought like it was the stable coin it is the stable coin USDC um, well known you know for for holding its peg holding its value of one to the dollar um, and and we saw that DPEG we saw it going all the way as low as 88 cents um, uh, which is crazy to see and and the reason behind it is that they had some exposure to Silicon Valley Bank they had 3.3 billion of their reserve um, in Silicon Valley Bank. And then as we covered in last week's show, Silicon Valley Bank's um, uh, was, you know, we didn't know at that stage that they were going to be bailed out. And and they were really the, the bank of, um, you know, these type of venture funds and all these type of technology companies. If you had a technology startup, you probably had a bank account with, with SVB. And the nice thing about them was they were actually a very big web too bank before crypto at all. I mean, they were a normal bank, They're top 16 bank in America. Um, and they were just well favored um, because they were in, the, in San Francisco where all of this happened. Um, and all of these sort of venture firms were, they were well known for being very friendly to um, technology companies. Um, so a lot of people were affected by this. But then we had the government come out and they said, look, anyone who had any money with SVB, whether they be a person or a company, that money will be underwritten by the government. So if you had a million dollars in SVB, you can withdraw a million dollars, the government will make sure. Now remember, by default, you only covered up to $250,000 um, if you had so if you had two and a half million dollars there, you could have effectively lost everything except for 250,000. So in a roundabout way, the irony is that the US government, by saving SVB's deposits and underwriting them, actually ended up bringing USDC back to one to one. So even though government's been so anti-crypto, they, they had to save SVB because if they don't, underwrite those deposits, there would be a bank run on all the banks in America, and everyone will be in massive, massive trouble. The government can't afford for that to happen. Now, the irony also is that they've been printing in the last week, and we've got the Fed printing again, $2 billion again has been put back in by them underwriting this. Um, and we've literally gone from a stage where we, we were tightening um, all the way back to pre-COVID or, or, or just when COVID happened, where we're printing again. And that's really why we're seeing the crypto price doing what it is doing at the moment and being so bullish. Because this is a, when the Fed started printing during COVID, that was the beginning of Bitcoin 10xing. And that's what's happening now. And that's why we're seeing this happening. Now, it happened really quick. People were thinking that the interest rates would be cut another, uh, you know, hiked another. 50 basis points this time around. Now people are saying there probably will be no hike, and if anything, it might be even cut. So we've we've pretty much in the last seven days completely turned over from where we were, um, and that's really quite bullish for crypto. We've turned a corner, in effect. Dude, um, I made some content about this whole government bailout stuff. I love just I just love thought-provoking content because there's just there's so many ways it could go. You know, when they said they're going to bail out all the banks, too, I was like, damn, a lot of money you're going to bail out. I don't know how that's going to happen. They're like, oh, taxpayers, like taxes. And I was like, what? Was taxes? Like, I don't know about that, dude. Um, so, I don't know. I, I would be very interested to see. No, like, so they like, specifically they specifically said it's not coming from, from taxpayer money uh, on the oh, U.S. side. Okay, okay. They specifically got it, got it. said that. Okay, whether, whether whether So, it's coming out of the insurance fund that's for banks specifically underwritten by the Fed, whether because of this, the banks have to pay higher premiums going forward, th th that will eventually be passed on to the banking customer. That remains to be seen. But they specifically said that it's not going to be from taxpayer money. Do you hear that? I hear um, I hear like a, a printer. I just hear a printer somewhere. I just hear like a... <laughs> Guys, if you're yeah. enjoying this show, please hit that retweet button. And if you're on YouTube, hit the comments, the likes, subscribe to Philip's channel, by the way, if you're enjoying this conversation, because this is a fun one. It's, uh, I mean, it's fun every single fucking week, honestly. But, dude, the, the idea that the government can just keep doing this kind of stuff, saying, oh, like, we'll just pay it off later. I'm like, bro, you're already $45 billion trillion in debt. What do you mean you're going to pay it later? You've never paid off anyone ever. Like, you're already trillions of dollars in debt. Like, that doesn't even make sense. 
I'm down though. I'm down for them to give me money too. Like UBI, like, listen, sign me up, bro. I, I don't know how it's any, I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm sure my life will get tremendously worse once I sign up for all the, the conditions that I have to meet to get an extra thousand bucks a month. But I'm excited, man. I'm excited for, well, I don't know if excited is the right word, but I'm looking forward to seeing how the world develops and changes over the next five years. Listen, this is not so positive in, in general. I mean, they, because this is the reason that we had all the tightening for the last year was because they printed money like they're doing now again, and that that devalued the dollar, the real value of the dollar, which is not good for the average consumer. It's, it's good for crypto. Right. You know, for Bitcoin specifically, because you know Bitcoin's whole thing is that they've they've got a limited supply. There will only ever be, I think, it's two point one million Bitcoins or whatever it may be, um, and 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 they can't print more. So so I don't understand why it has to be so extreme. Why do they have to you know print so much during COVID? That almost half the total American dollar supply was printed in a couple of weeks, and then they have yep. to so sharply hike rates and until they break every single bank, and now they. They have to quickly start printing trillions of dollars again why does it have to be so extreme why can't it just be slower and more cautious and less crazy it just makes it volatile and the one person who was buying usdc when it depegged was Vita the vitalik buterin the ethereum co-founder um if you follow his wallets he was buying 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 a lot wow wow at what number so he like bought at a 5% discount when it was 95 cents, he bought $286,000 um, when it was 95 cents. He then did two transactions for $28,000 when it was a 7% discount. And then he took another, I mean, it's not huge money when you think of how much the guy has. And then he took a total of $85,000 when it was a 12 percent discount so you can see even he was starting to get worried he slowly was taking less and less <laughs> as it went lower and lower um but yeah man it just shows you i mean that the right move to do there if you ever see something like a usdc depegging again the right move to do if you know how to do it is to just short it because the chances of it going to 1.1 dollars is nothing it's never going to be worth more than one so you put a stop loss at one dollar when it gets back to normal everything's good but you short it you say as it goes down i want to make money so your downside is that it hits a dollar again which it will do at some point and you get stopped out maybe if you shorted it from 98 cents you you lose two percent if it goes to a dollar but if it carries on dropping and it drops all the way to 88 cents like it did your upside is you made a huge amount of money you but you 10x pretty much you got 10, 10 times the, the leverage that you would have got on the downside. So that was the play. The play there, if you know how to do it, which I need to learn, because I don't, is to have shorted as soon as you saw it depegging with a stop loss. Yeah, that's, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm literally learning trading stuff. So all these words, I'm like, damn, I've been hearing a lot of this stuff recently. So I'm excited for myself to be trading. But you're very, I think you're very much on point right there. For sure. All right, and then we've got Ethereum, our good friends Ethereum. They've given a full date for the Shanghai um, 